everyone, nice to see you. The Chinese Communist Party, the CCP's internal power struggle, has never stopped, nor is it a secret anymore. However, the outside world gets little to no chance to actually see it while it is happening. But recently, this is no longer the case. It seems that the CCP can no longer hide its internal conflicts or no longer bothers to hide. Why do I say it? After today's news updates, I will talk about several examples and discuss the significance behind them as well as what these incidents mean to China as well as to the world. So make sure you stay. Recently posted on Twitter was information about the planned demolition of the Catholic Church on Wuxin Street in Xi'an, the capital city of Shanxi province. Locals there have raised banners in protest of this decision and the apparent suppression of the religious beliefs. Roman Catholics in Xi'an, China, are protesting the planned demolition of their 300-year-old archdiocese headquarters, the St. Francis Cathedral, known locally as the Wuxing Street Catholic Church. Originally constructed by Italian missionaries during the Kanji period of the Qing dynasty, the castle-like structure has long been considered a historical site worthy of preservation. Parishioners have raised banners to protect the church, and they say that this is an attempt to ignore or suppress their constitutional rights to practice their religious beliefs. A member of the Xi'an media, Mr. Jiang, agreed with this assessment. He said the church has a large congregation, and their mistreatment reminded him of the restriction imposed by the Cultural Revolution. He noted that over the past two years, the Chinese Communist Party had been destroying Christian churches, monasteries, and even Taoist temples, so to suppress the will of the people. Now, let's talk about why the CCP's internal power struggle are becoming more and more intense and obvious. The first example happened on July 31st at the completion and commissioning ceremony for the Beidou Navigation Satellite System in Beijing. By the way, the Beidou Navigation Satellite System is a satellite navigation system that the CCP tried to build by mobilizing all the resources of China to compete with and to provide an alternative to America's GPS or Global Positioning System. If a war breaks out between the U.S. and the CCP, the CCP's military capabilities could soon be paralyzed by the U.S. if it doesn't have its own satellite navigation system. So, in the CCP's own words, the newly completed Beidou system is 100% made in China, showing the country's ambitions in independently controllable technology breakthroughs. Obviously, the CCP views this completion of the Beidou system as a very important breakthrough for scientific and technological dominance in the 5G era. The ceremony to celebrate its completion and commissioning was held in the Great Hall of the People in Beijing, where all the most important CCP meetings are held. The CCP's head Xi Jinping, Premier Li Keqiang, and many other top leaders all attended the ceremony. The MC of the ceremony was Vice Premier Liu He. I guess many viewers are familiar with him, as he was the one who represented the CCP in the year-long US-China trade talks. Now, let's watch what happens when Liu He introduces the attendance of the ceremony. 出席今天仪式的有中共中央总书记、国家主席、中央军委主席习近平同志。中共中央政治局常委、国务院总理李克强同志。中共中央政治局常委、国务院副总理韩正同志。
Did you say anything wrong here? After Xi Jinping's name was announced, Liu He paused for quite a while, giving Xi Jinping enough time to stand up, turn around, and express his appreciation for those who applauded him. However, after Li Keqiang's name was announced, and after Li Keqiang had already stood up, turned around, and prepared to do the same as Xi Jinping, Liu He totally ignored him and continued to read the next person's name, leaving Li Keqiang at a loss for a moment as to what to do, whether to continue to stand or to sit down. This moment was broadcast live by China's central television and watched by perhaps tens or hundreds of millions. Maybe you are thinking what's the big deal about this? Well, for people who know the CCP's China, this is a very big deal. In all the CCP's events and reports about this event, who comes out first, who comes out the second, who follows who, and whose name should appear first in the news report, and the order of the names in the report, etc. All the details are carefully pre-arranged, and no mistakes whatsoever can be made regarding this. As the CCP system is not an open and transparent one, Everything is decided behind closed doors in the dark, so people have to rely on reading these reports carefully and read between the lines to try to work out who has had an upper hand in the power struggles and how this will affect the country's policies or the future of China, etc. So, it is very unusual that such a moment as we just watched would be allowed to happen, be allowed to broadcast live, and be allowed to stay on the internet for everybody to watch again repeatedly. The CCP used to talk about collective leadership, and all the members of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau were collectively responsible to the party and therefore enjoyed somewhat similar status when making decisions or in terms of how they were treated publicly. So the stark contrast between how Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang were treated at the ceremony tells us that the CCP's split has reached such a severe degree that they can no longer hide it or bother to hide it. Another very obvious sign of the split is the different direction Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang want to head in terms of economic recovery and development. In early June, when Li Keqiang visited Yantai, Shandong province, he highly praised the so-called store economy for creating jobs and being practical down to the earth and the vitality of China. After that, the store economy became a hot internet buzzword. Media reports about such and such person having earned a big amount of money by running a store on the street appeared one after another. Cities introduced encouraging policies and netizens were buzzing about what kind of street store to put up to earn a living. However, only several days later, on June the 6th, the CCP's mouthpiece Beijing Daily published an article saying that the store economy is not suitable for Beijing. China's central t television also published an article to criticize the store economy. People could easily say that there were two different voices inside the CCP. Earlier than that, on May 28th, during this year's two sessions, which are the most important annual political gatherings of the CCP, Li Keqiang openly said that China's per capita annual income was only 30,000 yuan, or about 4,325 US dollars.
He also said as many as 600 million people were earning less than 1,000 yuan or only 144 US dollars per month and that about 60 million people needed low income insurance, unemployment protection and special hardship assistance etc. And the pandemic had made things worse. He said that the central government had to take the lead in living through times of austerity. All levels of government should cut expenditure and tighten their belts, etc. You might think these are all common sense and nothing special, but in the CCP's China, doing or saying things based on common sense is itself a problem. Li Keqiang's open admission to China's difficulties contradicted Xi Jinping's China dream as well as Xi Jinping's claim that China had become a moderately prosperous society in 2020, and the achievement was even greater than expected. On June the 3rd, a self-criticism was circulated on the internet. Some Chinese people claimed that it belonged to Li Keqiang and that Li Keqiang was criticized by Xi Jinping and the CCP's Discipline Inspection Committee and was forced to admit his mistakes by contradicting Xi Jinping. We have no idea whether that self-criticism is true or not. But from the latest event with the ceremony on July 31st, we can see that Li Keqiang was openly humiliated by both Xi Jinping and Liu He. Please note that Liu He is the vice premier and only a subordinate of Li Keqiang in theory. Why did he dare to humiliate Li Keqiang? Did he receive some kind of instruction from Xi Jinping beforehand? We have no idea. But we do know that the CCP's economy has been hit hard by both the trade war with the US and the pandemic. Furthermore, because of the CCP's cover-up of the pandemic, more and more countries and people are feeling very angry towards the CCP. Some are talking about decoupling with China. That's why Xi Jinping recently started to talk about the internal cycle, which means that China will mainly do business with itself and cut itself off from the rest of the world. In other words, Xi Jinping is ready to go back to Mao's time when communist China was isolated from the world. To this, Li Keqiang also gave out a different voice by saying that the internal cycle economy wouldn't work for China. Interestingly, the Wall Street Journal published an editorial on July 27th indicating that America's tough stance on China could convince other CCP leaders that it would be very expensive to continue with Xi Jinping's lie. Some Chinese commentators say that the Wall Street Journal was calling for a coup to happen inside the China. Is a coup possible? Well, with the split publicly emerging to the surface, we can only say that the fight beneath the surface must be much, much more intense than we know. Usually, each year in late July or early August, the CCP will have a meeting or summer summit at Bei Daihe, a resort town by the sea in Hebei province. It is the most mysterious CCP meeting. Only top current leaders and the most powerful retired elders from earlier generations who still have a lot of influence inside the party can attend this meeting and it, it sets the tone for major dem domestic issues. The nation's future and fate could be thus decided there by a few people with nobody knowing who are actually there, what kind of decisions are made, and how those decisions are made, etc. In this sense, the CCP acts more like a criminal gang or a bunch of gangsters than a normal political party. 
So far this year, there were no words regarding when this, year, this year's Bei Daihe meeting will be held, who will attend, and what will be discussed, etc. According to a Chinese commentator Shi Shan, some powerful CCP elders are very unhappy about Xi Jinping and want to get rid of him. These people have sent secret emissaries to make contact with the U.S. to find a way out. Shi Shan says that these elders may state a coup very soon and bring down Xi Jinping through the internal mechanism of the CCP, just like what happened to Hua Guofeng in the past. By the way, Hua Guofeng was Mao Zedong's designated successor after Mao died and was soon ousted in 1978 after Deng Xiaoping regained power. According to Shi Shan, an internal CCP source says that Xi Jinping's situation is much worse than what Hua Guofeng faced before he was removed from office, as the CCP is facing the hardest time since it established its regime, as the entire world has been angered by the CCP, and especially because the U.S. is now determined to change the CCP and has made many moves at diplomatic, economic, military, and other levels. The source also says that Li Keqiang has become very active recently and has gained nods from those CCP veterans. There are calls from within the party to replace Xi Jinping with Li Keqiang. If this is true, then the upcoming Bei Daihe meeting may well be a decisive moment. There are also rumors that fearing what could happen at Bei Daihe, Xi Jinping will cancel this year's meeting. Shi Shan continues to say that there is no way to tell whether those rumors are true or not, but the fact that rumors keep propping up tells us that the CCP is really facing huge internal problems and divisions. What I want to say is that there is nothing surprising if a coup happens or if one day the CCP's central government loses control of China and the local officials start to act on their own. However, we must not pin our hope on a coup inside the CCP. To replace one CCP leader with another is meaningless, as the party is corrupt to the core, and the crimes it has committed all these years are definitely beyond redemption. Even if the CCP really collapses, mankind has a long way to go to really clear away its poisonous elements. Therefore, the free world must not let up its efforts of clearing the CCP cancer from our world so that we can save our nations and our future generations. That's all for today. Truth does save lives. Please subscribe to my channel and spread it. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.